we'll do some simple explanation of waves. Now, here, what I've drawn here is a blue wave moving vertically like this, okay? And the red one, a red aspect moving horizontally like this. So usually waves, they move along two planes, like this and like this. And then we call them vertical and horizontal, but they could, sometimes they could be rotating but they still keep the angle between them. <laughs> now, every uh, thing in nature has either the two waves or one wave. Humanity has only the horizontal wave. Our wavelengths of our fields move horizontal. When we emit waves, they move horizontal. Uh, all things that are good for us have horizontal waves. Now, the vertical aspect is very harming. What has the vertical aspect? Now, the first thing that had the vertical aspect is the sun. The sun produces vertical and horizontal. Well, how come the sun is the source of life and it produces both because the sun is a source of life for all kinds of creatures whether it's vertical or it's horizontal but we can when we interact with the sun we get the benefits of the horizontal but we get the harm of the vertical otherwise the sun wouldn't cause you skin cancer if it didn't have the vertical aspect you see now the sun hits onto the plants. The plants, they cancel the vertical, transform the energy of the sun <coughs> into whatever chemical compounds and all that, and, but they reflect only the horizontal. The moon gets both aspects, reflects back only the horizontal. That's why you can't get skin cancer from the moon, you see. And in Germany, they have a saying, they say, uh, good moon, bad sun. It's the peasants in Germany say that. Good, you say that too? Guter Mann, schlechter Sonne, huh? Because it has both. Now, there's something else that's very important. All natural materials reflect only the horizontal, and all man-made materials reflect both. And this is a very, very dangerous thing. All our buildings and all like that reflect both. But when we go out in nature, all what we're getting is the horizontal. We're not getting the vertical. That's and why so good that's why you feel now vertical. But you said the sun has also yes, but <coughs> when when you're in nature the the vertical is cancelled and you get only the, all natural objects reflect back the horizontal and don't reflect the vertical at you. Unnatural objects will reflect both. You're going to do that in the radicesia class. We're going to go out and make measurements. We'll adjust Pendler instruments on the vertical and see if a tree is reflecting it, if the wall of the building is reflecting it. If a wooden uh, wall is reflecting vertical, because, let's say, paint makes a difference or doesn't make a difference. A painted wall, okay, what kind of paint is on it and all that. So you can actually uh, test all materials for this reflection of the vertical. The vertical is disease. If you test any, your body and you find in your energy field any vertical aspects, that means disease in the body. This is very, very important. Now, when uh, all the species in nature who use divine wisdom, build their houses, build their nests, build their 
whatever they build there. Somehow, they always use natural materials and somehow they end up always with balanced energy in there. We are the only species who build haphazardly and end up increasing the vertical and making ourselves sick. Just by walking in a town without trees, in any area without trees, but in 10 minutes, you'll be full of so much vertical in you that you'll feel it. Now, electricity, and that's from, has both vertical and horizontal. Now, all waves of communication have vertical and horizontal. You see? So we were just speaking about the danger of the information age, and we said it might be the end of humanity because quantitatively it's so much different than what we, uh, we can take. But qualitatively, it's even more destructive. Quality-wise, it fills us with vertical energy. That vertical energy means cancer, means all those things. Because you can detect cancer in the body years before it comes with detecting vertical emanations. Now, we have another problem, and that is Earth radiation. Earth radiation is a form of energy that comes out of the Earth when we have certain crossings of underground rivers at certain angles or certain cracks. And the Earth radiation here, we mean by Earth radiation, is when those uh, emanations or vortices that come out have a lot of vertical. And when you sleep in such a spot, then we can say that within so much time you'll end up with, when they discovered that they used to say cancer, but uh, now we could say immune deficiency is a more general word, see. So, and mm -hmm. that is maybe uh, a very important aspect now, that how come people are speaking of body electricity? Everybody speaks now about body electricity. <coughs> if, if you had body electricity, then when I feel a bit down, I could just plug my hand into the outlet and feel, yeah, why not, if it's electricity? Why should electromagnetic fields be harmful to my body if my body has body electricity? That means I also have electromagnetic fields. I should be replenished by them, see? but. Electricity is not electricity. That means what I have is not the same kind of electricity. There are two types of electricities. What I have is a horizontal waveform. The other is horizontal and vertical. So we, it can't be the same. See? Can I ask you a question? Yes? In Germany, they say Wasserrad. <coughs> what you were talking about when you speak over... That's what I said, Wasserrad, and that's the underground river crossings. Uh, I, I said underground water springs or underground water flows. Yeah, they don't have one word for it like Vasarada. Uh, uh, I, I mean, Vasarada is, is just saying water flow. But when they say, when they say the word or, or, or water, uh, other is, is like a, a vein. Yeah, so when they say it's a water vein, the, uh, we don't use there's no similar word in English, so I say underground streams or, or such a thing. Now, in, uh, we're going to speak about that in detail because in the 1930s, and I'm going with you slowly to the beginning of two very important sciences at the time, uh, and that's the modern geobiology and biobiology, two sciences that started in the 1930s or around the turn of the century. How they started at the time, there was the huge cancer scare in Europe because it, we are used to think of disease as being transmitted. A hundred years ago, we couldn't accept the idea of disease being transmitted because people were taught that disease 
arises from your own evil doings. And when Pasteur and those people said, no, they come from organisms, then we couldn't accept that. It was not accepted. And I think today both are valid. Both are valid. The concept that you can create your own disease inside you, and that's all about psychosomatic things. And also, but we have come to feel at ease with the idea of something, a virus or a bacteria or something hitting us. Then all of a sudden, people are getting cancer with no known cause. It's something they're getting it, they can't protect themselves, and there, it was a huge scare. What, what do we do? I mean, how can we tackle that? So, while the medical people were trying to find solutions, the population in general had a big scare, and they were looking for answers. So, the answers came from the least expected. It, it came from the farmers. The farmers of Germany came and said, okay, we, if you want to know about cancer, we'll tell you everything about it. We know how it happens and, and everything. We'll tell you exactly where it happens. Cancer is an earth-related disease because we have cancerous trees. We have cancerous uh, spots, areas. Trees along a cancerous path or, or a cancerous area will have deformed growth, will have sort of tumors coming out of them. So we, they didn't call them cancerous. I mean, the word cancerous is from the medical field, but they spoke about earth radiation, Erdstrahl, and they just spoke about that, earth radiation. And of course, everybody told them, this is nonsense. there's nothing called earth radiation, we, there's nothing we can measure. There's, so the farmers said, you don't have to measure, you can see. I mean, look at a tree that's deformed, then look at another one, that's deformed, draw a line between them and you have a line of earth radiation. They tell them we don't put our animals on such spots because they'll have stillbirth, they'll give no milk, the, the meat when you slaughter them will be all uh, like that very tough meat and all that. So we avoid those cancer spots. So it's very simple, all you have to do is avoid uh, the cancer spots and you won't have cancer because cancer comes from that. And uh, th this was very strange. I mean, how come the farmers are teaching us? So a few uh, scientists came. One of them is called von Paul. And uh, there are a few others. And he came in uh, one of the towns uh, in Germany. It's called Willisburg, I think. And uh, he made a survey of all cancer cases, put them on the map. And he found a very strange thing that 80% of the cancer cases were located along 10% of the area. Now in that 10% of the area on that pattern was an area with extensive underwater streams. So the farmers were right in a way. Earth radiation had to do with that. Now that's the beginning of geobiology, the science of understanding radiation of the earth. Biobiology at that time started researching what happens when this thing goes into a building. How is it reflected, how, what, intensified, what happens when it goes, what happens to our health. That's the beginning of both. And are we finished now? Now, I told you about how we interact with the vertical uh, type of radiation here. Now in Earth radiation, like I told you, when Van Paul made his statistical survey, and many others made it later on, in the 1930s they discovered that statistically cancer is something related to your location. Now at that time, you know all the farmers uh, in Europe, or use many of them, they use water dowsers to find water. And this is water dowsing is not exactly like uh, mental dowsing, where, where it's related in a way, but it's different. Water dowsing is a very natural <coughs> thing because your body is made of 70% water. So if you go over any water patch, any any moving water, because when water moves, it makes friction. 
and this friction uh, radiates some energy. When you go over it, your body feels it. The same thing like when the moon affects the tide, it affects the water in you, so you have an inner tide inside you. So we are a water being 70% water. So it's very easy when you go on a water patch, something happens, there's a tide inside you that moves. Now, how can you uh, feel that? If you go like that and you put your hand out like that and there's water, you'll feel a small tremble like that in your hand. But it might be so little that not everybody could feel it. But if you hold a branch, a twig, a green branch, because it should be an extension of your water system of the energy field, you hold the green branch, it's like extending your antenna. This little trembling will become a bigger trembling like this. So the farmers used to go and they used to walk like this. And whenever there's a strong water crossing, when on a water crossing then, this energy is stronger because you have two paths crossing. In the middle, there's a vortex coming up like this. So when you go in that vortex, your body feels it straight away. So the, the twig goes like that. So this is, there is nothing uh, psychic about it. This is a very natural thing that we are affected by water like we are affected by moon, uh, the movement of the moon. Let's say if you want to cut your hair, then uh, do it when the moon is waxing, not when it's waning, because the energy, the water is, is going up. And when you cut your hair in that moment, it will wax be uh, and it will become better later on. If you cut it when the moon is going down, to become weaker. So we are affected by the motion of water. So the Taoists they just come and say, okay, this area has underground water crossings. Now, we won't go more into earth radiation now. We'll do that tomorrow when, when we start uh, going into radiocesia, but we'll continue. I'm just giving it to you as an example <coughs> of vertical earth radiation, you see, because if we would have believed those people who started this research, if we would have believed uh, the geobiologists and the biobiologists in the 1930s, we wouldn't have had 80% of the cancer cases today. <coughs> but why do we discard the research? Because the biologists made uh, a fatal mistake <coughs> after when they ca they came the age of industrialization, the fatal mistake was we are detecting not only Earth radiation, but we are detecting electromagnetic fields, and they are bad. Now they move against the modern technology. And all of a sudden, it's the black sheep. Th they are the people who are saying everything is bad, you know. And so this is why it's whenever in biobiology there's a certain research, somebody can influence another research to show the opposite. You know, somehow it's, they keep it controversial. So it never really went into universities, into things, because they try to keep it controversial. And I think this is a very, very <coughs> big mistake. Because <coughs> people have paid for that with cancers, with all things like that, because now if in the 30s, 80% of cancers were due to earth radiation, now it's probably 50-50, 50% earth radiation and 50% electromagnetic fields. So people do not, until this moment, they do not understand the importance of dealing with those things. They think, okay, I mean, all this, these people are just uh, spending their time, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, the, I mean, they're against everything, you know, people, as if we're fanatics who are against everything, but really 80% of cancer cases could have been saved because you can enter any place and it's very easy. If I have a bed like that, I can test and this, if I find the spot on the bed where I, I detect any vertical radiation, I can tell you exactly the person sleeping in that bed will have cancer in this spot in his body in so many years. It's very easy to detect. But until then, you see, from the first day, he will have problems in that area of his body. He could have 
back aches. He could have immunity problems. He could have frequent allergies. He could have I mean, there's so many things that lead up to it. And all you have to do sometimes is just move the bed one foot and the thing is gone. So imagine that so many cases of cancer, so many lives could have been saved or quality of lives could have been made better by moving a bed one foot. If we become aware of all that. And that's a very big problem that if we do not become aware about earth radiation and electromagnetic fields, th there is no way our immune system is going to, uh, to survive. So the media now, the information age, is putting the vertical radiation into our body because the, everything crossing our body has vertical. Now there's another problem mm -hmm. and that's even a much much bigger problem here this bigger problem is whenever you think something negative or do something negative the body can create vertical radiation you see you you can actually produce the same vertical wave as in earth radiation and as electricity just by negative actions different I mean they're different on every level on a mental level you could produce them on an emotional level you could produce them on a physical level you could produce them a simple lie a very simple lie will produce a vertical negative wave imagine that so maybe our morals are not just a way of preaching morals, but maybe they have a, a base in reality. See? You, so now this gives us a, a new way of seeing psychosomatic things. Because you think that psychosomatic things, that, okay, my negative emotions and negative thoughts can somehow uh, make me sick, and positive emotions, positive thoughts, can make me better okay but what you don't understand the mechanism here is that they actually send in vertical waves to your body as if you are living permanently provide of course you're doing whatever you're doing permanently wrong as if you are living on earth radiation or living in your case you're generating so you fight against the age of information and fight against earth radiation while you're generating it inside your body. Now, there's another thing that we should take into consideration. When we increase it, the wavelengths in the air, in the age of information, by resonance, modern technology by resonance, will raise, will enter into resonance with other vertical. All the verticals enter into resonance together. So, in a place where you had that amount of earth radiation let's say 30 years ago today by resonance with electromagnetic uh, you have that amount so we are actually increasing even the earth radiation we're increasing it today maybe hundredfold with electromagnetic waves but what are we also increasing we are increasing the negative emotional psychological, mental actions in the body, they become natural, you see. Well, maybe uh, y you would look a at a child and say, this child seems to lying for that child or doing that seems very natural. When we were young, you know, we would say that, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't feel good and many things that didn't feel good with us, they feel very good now with them because we have put the vertical that is in resonance with those actions. So now we cannot s speak about immoral actions if we are actually fueling them. So the danger here is also on a psychological mental level there's a disruption. Of course if you tell people that we we'll say hey, hey, he's crazy now he just wants to make uh, he, he has something against modern technology he just wants to make us uh, sort of uh, 
fear all this thing or, or go away from it and all that. But no, it's not that. What we want to do is actually very simple. We want to cancel, if we can find a way to cancel the vertical from our modern technology, then I can actually transform the media into called scientifically carrier waves. A carrier wave is a wave that carries your voice, carries your picture, carries whatever it is, and takes it through things. It's penetrative. So, for example, my voice wouldn't go, but put on a carrier wave, it would, the carrier wave can go through the wall so it can take my voice with it. And it, so carrier waves can carry information. Now what if I put a form of healing energy on that carrier wave that has the ability to cancel the vertical and balance the horizontal? It helps the other. It helps resonate. Not only that, you would have the information aid will be all of a sudden, in a split second, it would be turned to a mass healing age. It will, you'd have the golden age in just like that if you become aware of that. The problem is, from Paul said in the 1930s about earth radiation, and we still doubt what he's saying till today. So, we should do our best, but whether we can really do it, that's an How we did that some uh, a few times, we did that in in a in California uh, two years ago, and uh, what we did was place some colors uh, in the studio in such a way that they create a certain energy quality that balances the radiation. And when you watch the TV set there, you get a healing energy out of the TV set. All the vertical is cancelled. Then we did it last year in a program called Health is Your Wealth. We did it twice, and they told the people now, after I phoned uh, Larry Gust, who's an electrobiologist with us here, I told him, Larry, uh, before they connect with me to speak on that radio station, go to the studio, take your pen, and put a, a few colored dots till you create the energy field in the studio, so that when somebody listens to this, they will feel this healing energy come out. And th the strange thing that happened is, Larry had gone to the, the lady, who is called Jeannie Genet, who was doing this program, and he went to her apartment to do some electrobiology work. And he did his electrobiology work, and then he took, he balanced the room, he took two colored pens, put two dots, made his balancing and said now it will be okay. He didn't explain to her what he did. You know, he's very reserved. He wanted to stick to professional electrobiology. And then he did that. The next day, two people uh, come in from the studio, a man and his wife, and he comes in and he says, there's something strange. What's this light, this glow in the middle of the room? And then uh, Jeannie says, I don't know what glow and she says there is something definite in the middle of them. I see it. He was a bit clairvoyant. I see something here. His wife said, I don't see anything, but she, when she would go like that, she says, my hair feels something when I go in it. And then he goes out. <coughs> then a doctor, a friend of hers came there and went and he's in this light. He started getting something and he said, I'm getting into a state similar to what happened to me in an operation 15 years ago when I got, got an out-of-body experience. And then it was very strange there. So uh, afterwards, an, a friend of hers, an Indian shaman, was phoning her that she was going to make uh, a program with him weeks later. And on the phone he said, hey Jeannie, what's that column of light I perceive in the middle of your room? So she said, what, do you perceive it from where? He says, there's a column of light in the middle of your room. Something is happening there. It's the energy is radiating through the phone line. And she didn't uh, know what was happening. So she called Larry and said, uh, hey, Larry, 
what did you do in the apartment? Something strange. And Larry said, uh, it's not me, you know. It's an Egyptian called Dr. Ibrahim Karim. And he should be somewhere in Florida. <laughs> so if you want to go into all those spiritual things, please contact him. So she contacted me and said, we want to know exactly what this is. So we'll put you on, uh, on our radio program for two shows. First, it was one thing, and people started recording it and using it for healing and meditation, so they asked for another thing. <coughs> so I asked, that's when I asked Larry to go in the studio and put the colors there. And the people started sending in and phoning in and saying, we really feel this. So you see, this is just to show that you can really transform the media emanation into something that will really help the immune system, whether it's human, plant, or whatever it is, it will really make a huge difference. I had used that in Egypt before on a television program. It was a series, a 30-day uh, series. And, but there, I managed to convince them to put, uh, I mean, we did colors, we did shapes, we did things with the decoration. I stood with the people there, and we made the decoration of the studio because it was there for 30 days. And we achieved a fantastic effect, and people used to go there, and <coughs> after I finished, they used to put the tapes, and when they were n not feeling okay, they put one of the tapes a and see it. So it is not so uh, strange. I mean, when we say the media is going to cause, could cause, or the age information could gl cause global life extinction, but with a little help, it could introduce the golden age just with a little help by <coughs> changing this. Now, in radiesthesia, when we go on the third day, one of the exercises I'll make you make, I'll let each two of you measure each other, and I'll ask always one to produce in his body vertical electrical waves and let the other one measure it, and then do it you don't have to start doing things in this room. No, all you have to do is imagine them. I mean, <laughs> but you, you, can, you have an hour where you can imagine, replay all the vices you can think of and see how strong you can emit a vertical wave that the other person beside you can actually measure. And then after you do that, you change and the other person tries it. It's, this is made just to prove a point. Because you have to, to see it to believe it. You, don't, you have, don't have to, to believe what I tell you. I mean, you should be old enough not, not to do that. I, otherwise, I'll tell you lots of stories. So you have to, to check on that. So this is the situation. We want to do something with this. Now, what happened is the people in geobiology, it was the science of geobiology that also started, like I said, looking for spots with earth radiation and trying to avoid them. So whenever I wanted to build a house, I'd get a geobiologist to determine where I had a problem, and I'd avoid it. They have some many devices to sort of uh, uh, reflect back that earth radiation, the earth or disperse it and all that, but all with problems, all those devices and the institutes are always everybody saying that the other ones doesn't work. The problem is they work well and then they get impregnated because earth radiation is a carrier wave. And it will be halted for some time, but after a bit it will go through. So in biogeometry we, do, we don't do that. We have a t completely different way of uh, dealing with them. But while they were actually researching that, they found something very strange that some areas that had underwater streams had earth radiation that was very beneficent, that cured everything. So somewhere there, there was something that now could balance things. And this is when they started going to this place to see what is, what's the qualities that we find there. Now every spot that they found had remnants of old sacred place. Either it had a modern church on it, or if you dig a bit, you find s some ancient whatever monuments from whatever. But it always, all, all the good spots 
had something to do with sacred monuments at certain time. So, and as very strange, they never made a mistake. I mean, they are both because some people who use normal dowsing, they measure on some scales, they measure the intensity of energy. And you could make a mistake if you find the spot. If you're not well trained in it, you could mistake a bad spot and think that, oh, I've discovered the holy spot, you know, and it's a cancerous spot. You must be able to have instruments that really differentiate because some people use bovis scales and use things that are mental scales and so many things, they're never accurate. You have to go and be able to differentiate. This is not something to play with that you think you discover a good spot and at the end you end up with cancer, you see. So it's, but the str strange enough, they never touched the bad spots and they always found the good spots. Now in ancient times, for example, when they wanted to build the city, they came and First of all, they would find the good spot. And this would be the center of the city, this would be the temple, this would be whatever they put there. But there were ways. After they used different dowsing methods to find it, they would get uh, sheep and make a small corral like that and, and put the sheep in it and leave them for a month. And then come afterwards and when they slaughter the sheep, they look at the quality of the meat. And especially things, delicate things like the liver and things like that, they look, keep looking at the meat. And if they see strange deformations, then this power spot is not, is not good. If they see the, the sheep becoming very healthy, and they see the meat really w very, very rosy and things like that, and the liver very clear, then it's a very good spot. And there are other ways. If they see too many ants, then it's an indication that it's earth radiation. There are things like that. Uh, if you see pigeons <coughs> circling around the area, then it's probably a very good spot. So they used natural things. You'd look at the vegetation of the trees. If the trees have any twisting or any uh, uh, tumors on them, any growths, then the power spot is harmful. That Between both, it's just a polarity. One of them, the earth vortex, is coming turning one way and the other is turning the other way. But you, you, can, you don't need any uh, science or any scientific knowledge for that. All you have to do is have an eye for if this, that this tree look okay or doesn't look okay. In the good spots, you're going to find that the vegetation has very vivid colors. You know, sometimes you enter somewhere and you feel as if the colors are alive, as if they're, th there's a luster like that. And that's what happens when you're on a good spot. It's, the colors are really brighter and the leaves are, are a bit thicker like that. With, with a bit of training, it's very easy to find. And the other one uh, is also very easy to find. So they never made a mistake. In, in a book uh, about the spots in Europe, they were saying about the strongest sacred spot in Europe. And I was looking and I found that it was just two miles from where I live in Zurich. It's there and they said this is the strongest spot in Europe. And it's in a private field, in a farmer's field. So I looked and said there's something wrong there. I'll go and test it but in a farmer's field, if it was really the strongest spot in Europe, it would have the biggest cathedral in Europe. I mean they wouldn't have missed it, no way they would have missed it. But if everybody's missing, maybe they avoided it. So I went there, I said, but if it's two miles away f from my home, if it's that strong, why not get some <laughs> of that energy? But when I was going to that field, I saw some crooked trees. And I said, okay now, if it's the strongest spot in Europe with crooked trees, should I measure it or not? Because I'm going to enter into tune with it. You see, and, and that's very dangerous. So I said, if it's that strong. So I said, okay, I'm wearing anyhow so many things uh, and all the, the, the stuff, but I said, I'll, I'll do it very quickly, in a few seconds, and then if it's a bad one, uh, I just go in the sun, clean myself, and, and do whatever rituals I do and all that. And I did it, I found it a very negative spot. That's why everybody avoided it. 
And I felt, <coughs> with all the things I had, I felt sick for three days. Not really sick, I managed to get myself okay, but I had this feeling of nausea here. For three days, yeah, really bad, you know, when you enter Can this, yeah. No, but if it's that strong, if it's the strongest spot in Europe, it's like something hitting you in the face like that, you, you, you know you're not ready for it. And you, you just want to take your pendulum and, and you adjust it on the vertical, and all of a sudden you, you get a huge turning and, and you feel something in, in your head, it's like something flashing. You see, there's a big difference between just walking on it, you feel a bit bad, and tuning into it. You cannot measure without tuning into it. But you see, no problem. I'm lucky it just took a couple of days. And, but you could, <coughs> there are some places, uh, I mean, I wouldn't advise people to make it as their vocation in life to go and find the bad spots <laughs> in houses. No, because it's really, you, you think you're doing a good thing. If you can go to everybody's bed, find the bad spot and make him avoid it, it's good. But you keep doing it, keep doing it and charging your body with the vertical. And once your body is charged with too much vertical, you'll be attracted to the vertical. So you'll find, for example, the things you start liking, I like this area, it will be full of vertical things because your body is full of vertical. So I don't advise that. We go in and produce the biogeometrical solutions. And then we check. Okay, so I think we I have to close in for today and mm -hmm. tomorrow then we will go deeper into the qualities of energy and biogeometry and all that.